Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode dedicated to the uh, IBM PC 5150. So uh, today we are going to look at the main board, uh, also known as the CPU board. This is the CPU board from uh, my uh, IBM 5150. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, the CPU board with uh, 64k up to 256k. Uh, so, in order to start, let's take a look at the uh, technical reference. I've uh, printed only a few pages of the technical reference. And uh, here on uh, page uh, 117, there is this diagram. I will try to rotate it and uh, see it on the board. So here there is the memory and you can see it here, the memory area. Then uh, here the read-only memory, yes, these ones. Uh, then uh, we have here the system expansion slots. So these are the system expansion slots. Uh, we have the CPU with uh, space for the MAT coprocessor. So this is the CPU and the space for the MAT coprocessor. We have connectors for keyboard and cassette. So these are the two connectors, the keyboard connector and the cassette connector. We have the power supply. So these are the two connectors that uh, receive current from the power supply. Uh, we also have uh, two deep switches. Uh, this is switch block one and switch block two. So switch block one, switch block two. Uh, and uh, we have this uh, speaker output. So this connector here is for connecting the speaker. And uh, here uh, we have a jumper, this one. And uh, if we look again in the technical reference, we see uh, on page uh, one four a mention regarding this jumper. It says the cassette adapter allows the attachment of any good quality audio cassette through the earphone output and either the microphone or auxiliary inputs. The system board has a jumper for either input. Okay, so uh, with this jumper, uh, you can select uh, how you connect uh, to the audio cassette. Now, uh, looking some more uh, in the technical reference, uh, we find also this mention regarding the switches. This is on page uh, one three. So uh, let's see it next to the switches. Remember, this is uh, switch one. Uh, this is switch block two, as indicated here. Okay, so switch block one, switch block two. So um, it says here, uh, two dual inline package deep switches, uh, two eight switch packs. So uh, uh, each switch block has eight individual switches, uh, are mounted on the board and can be read under program control. So um, the program can read uh, these values. The deep switches provide the system software with information about the installed options, how much storage the system board has, what type of display adapter is installed, what operation modes are desired when power is switched on, color or black and white, 80 or 40 character lines, and the number of disk drives attached. 
Okay, so uh, this uh, system information in modern computers uh, is configured through the BIOS configuration utility and uh, the information itself is stored in uh, some form of uh, flash memory. But in the case of the IBM 5150, uh, the configuration is done through these uh, switches and uh, as you can see, uh, there is no uh, battery on this board because uh, the settings are actually stored in the way these switches are configured. So let's look a bit more. This time on page uh, 132, this actually uh, speaks about the 8255A. So let's see what is this 8255A. Uh, you can uh, uh, find it uh, on the board, 8255A. So this is the one, this chip here. And uh, I also um, printed the data sheet. So this is the data sheet. Uh, I only printed the first page. Uh, so 8255A, uh, Programmable Peripheral Interface, or PPI. Uh, and uh, this connects uh, the system to some uh, external devices, including the cassette, uh, including the speaker, including the keyboard. And um, as you can see, this particular chip is also compatible with uh, some, uh, al some older systems, uh, such as MCS-85. Uh, but I will not go into uh, too many details about this particular chip. Instead, uh, let's take a look back to the... Uh, IBM uh, system reference, technical reference. So uh, on page 132, we see uh, this uh, programming guide for the PPI, but uh, we see here the settings associated with switch block one. So uh, sw uh, again, switch block one is this one. And uh, you can see here, uh, we have uh, the first option uh, indicates if there is a diskette drive available. The second setting says reserved. Uh, then we have the memory size, but for the system board, so not the overall memory size, but just the system board memory size. And this is controlled by uh, switches three and four. Uh, then we have the display type, which is 5 and 6. And then uh, the number of uh, diskette drives, which is uh, 7 and 8, all in the switch block 1. Uh, then uh, in switch block 2, so switch block 2, uh, we have here uh, the overall uh, available uh, memory and uh, also uh, here uh, we have some uh, indications about the uh, settings of the various switches. I have also um, uh, printed a more detailed explanation. I will leave a link to this page in the description uh, where uh, we can see more details about switch block one. Uh, for example, uh, as I said, the first setting uh, if uh, is off, then it says the 5150 has one or more floppy drives. Okay, so in this case, the setting is off. Uh, then, and if we look closely here, uh, we see 
uh, that switch in uh, the corresponding uh, position. Then um, switch 2 uh, is uh, on if the MAT coprocessor is not installed. Okay, so this corresponds to what we see here. The MAT coprocessor is not installed. This switch is on. Uh, then uh, installed motherboard RAM and uh, we see if 3 and 4 are both off then banks 0, 1, 2, 3 are populated and we see this setting here and also looking at the RAM I will speak more about the memory soon but uh, we see all the banks are populated uh, then uh, switches 7 and 8 uh, floppy drive count and this is used only if switch 1 is off so switch 1 uh, off indicates that the 5150 has one or more uh, floppy drives and um, in my case uh, I have uh, switch 7 uh, off switch 8 on uh, indicating uh, two floppy drives uh, then uh, for the switch block 2 um, I, I skipped the settings for the video card so uh, switches 5 and 6 um, so you see them uh, here in my case they are both off indicating uh, MDA monochrome and uh, uh, it should be uh, on and on uh, indicating a card with uh, BIOS expansion ROM usually. Now with regard to uh, switch block 2 uh, so this is the one uh, I have a table here again I will uh, leave a link in the description so, um, depending on the overall uh, memory available on the motherboard, uh, in the entire system, not just on the motherboard, uh, there are different settings, as you can see in this table. The last three uh, settings are not uh, possible to be read by the BIOS. So, the last three settings are off so we are interested in these ones so we have here um, this uh, setting as one then we have zero and then one one so this corresponds to the last entry in this table uh, which reads 640 kilobytes so this is the memory available in uh, this system okay so let's uh, take a closer look at the memory uh, as you can see here uh, the memory is organized into banks this is bank zero this is always populated and then we have bank one bank two and bank three and uh, in uh, some boards uh, these banks uh, may be left unpopulated in which case uh, the jumpers here the switches uh, should be set accordingly uh, however here all the banks are populated also if you look closely uh, it says here bit 0 and here bit 7 and we notice we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, chips in each bank. So if we look at the data sheet for one of these uh, chips, so this is a TMS4164, uh, it says it's a, a 65,000 bit dynamic random access memory. So the key here is bit and it also says here it has 6500 uh, 
65,536 uh, times one uh, organization. So uh, when you supply an address here, it will uh, either read or write a single bit. So that's why you need eight of those chips in order to have a byte. So each individual uh, bank uh, has uh, 64 kilobytes uh, of data and each uh, individual uh, chip has 64 kilobits of data. Uh, in addition, uh, there is another chip here and it says here bit P. So this is actually the parity bit uh, associated with the bank. Uh, another uh, chip of interest is the uh, 8259A and you can see it here. Uh, this is a programmable interrupt controller or PIC uh, similar to the PPI that we saw earlier, so similar to this one. Uh, the PIC uh, is also compatible with uh, older systems such as MCS80 or MCS85. Uh, again, I will not go into details since uh, these chips uh, require uh, a lot of uh, discussion in order to understand how to program them, how to access them, what is stored and so on. And in the future I will probably uh, make a video about uh, each one uh, when I uh, work on uh, simulating this system. Another uh, chip is this AM9517A. Uh, you can see it here. So this is the one. Uh, this is a DMA controller or direct memory access controller. Apart uh, from these chips that uh, are very interesting also from a programming point of view. Uh, there are these other chips here, here. Uh, and uh, again, I will not describe each one of them, but uh, for example, we have a um, bus transceiver in the form of an uh, SN74 uh, LS245 and uh, we can see one of them here for example here and um, this allows uh, data transfer uh, between uh, uh, data buses as it says here the these octal bus transceivers are designed for a synchronous two-way communication between data buses. Uh, now I'm not exactly sure uh, when they are being used. I'm guessing it has something to do with uh, DMA. Uh, but uh, if you know more details about when these chips are used, please uh, leave a comment. Uh, I also extracted a data sheet um, regarding uh, latches, uh, edge triggered flip flops, uh, which uh, are also uh, employed. Uh, this pretty much covers uh, what I wanted to say about this board. Uh, before we end, let's also take a look on the other side. Okay, so as you can see, there is uh, nothing here, no component, only uh, traces. Okay, 
so uh, thank you for watching and if you enjoyed it please like and subscribe and see you next time bye